Ever wondered why your homemade coffee doesn't taste as good as the one from your favorite cafe? You might be surprised to learn that the freshness of your coffee beans plays a big part. Just like any other food product, coffee beans have an expiration date. But unlike canned goods or dried pasta, coffee beans start losing their flavor just two weeks after roasting. That's right, only two weeks. From the moment they're roasted, coffee beans begin a slow, inevitable decline towards staleness. The vibrant flavors and intoxicating aromas start to fade, replaced by a flat and lifeless taste. So the next time you reach for a bag of beans, take a moment to check the roasting date. If it's been more than two weeks, you might want to reconsider. Remember, the secret to a flavorful cup starts with fresh beans. Moving on to our next brewing blunder, the grind size. Now this is where many coffee lovers stumble. It's not just about grinding your beans, it's about getting the right grind size for your brewing method. That's right, folks, not all grinds are created equal. If you're a fan of espresso, you'll want a fine grind, almost as fine as powdered sugar. But if you're more into cold brew or French press, a coarse grind similar to sea salt is your best bet. Now why does this matter? Well, if your grind size doesn't match your brewing method, you could end up with over-extraction, which gives your coffee a bitter taste. Or you could have under-extraction, which leaves your coffee tasting sour. So it's not just about grinding your beans, it's about getting the right grind size for your brewing method. So always adjust your grind size according to your brewing method. Now let's talk about the role of water in your coffee. You might be surprised to learn that water isn't just a passive player in your brew. In fact, it's a crucial ingredient that can greatly affect the taste of your coffee. Using filtered or spring water can make a world of difference, enhancing the flavor notes of your beans. On the other hand, tap water, especially if it's high in minerals or chlorine, can leave your coffee tasting off. But it's not just about the quality of your water. The coffee to water ratio is another critical factor. Too much water and your coffee could end up tasting weak and watery. Too little, and you might end up with a brew that's overly strong and bitter. The golden rule? For every six ounces of water, use two tablespoons of coffee. Finding the right balance might take a bit of trial and error, but trust me, it's worth the effort. Never underestimate the power of water in your brew. Finally, let's tackle the issues of overbrewing and improper storage. Overbrewing or letting your coffee sit for too long in the maker can turn an otherwise delightful brew into a bitter disappointment. It's like overcooking your favorite meal. The flavors get lost and it leaves a sour taste in your mouth. Now let's talk about storage. Ever left a bag of chips open overnight? Just as those chips lose their crunch, coffee grounds exposed to air lose their flavor. That's because coffee is hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture from the air. This can lead to a stale and uninspiring cup of joe. The solution store your coffee in an airtight container, ideally in a cool, dark place. By avoiding overbrewing and ensuring proper storage, you'll maintain your coffee's freshness and flavor. Avoid these brewing blunders and you're one step closer to the perfect cup of coffee.